Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson, and this is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. And tonight we'll be reviewing um, a sort of horror supernatural movie titled... The go- go- no, you've got the Gothic Supernatural Horror. Okay, yeah, that- a Gothic Supernatural Horror titled um, Sleepy. Sleepy Hollow. That, that was released in 1999. Yeah, that's, with our, that's a... Um, yeah, one of our favourite actors, Johnny Depp. Yeah. I normally go for this usual stuff, but obviously, you know, it's a Tim Burton film. Right. Now, uh, produced by Scott Rudden, Adam Schroeder, and Larry Franco. Mm-hmm. Directed by, you guessed it, Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Screenplay by Andrew Kevin Walker. Mm. The story was obviously, mm-hmm. uh, and not necessarily, uh, was a comp, well, not obviously, mm-hmm. but was a compilation. Uh, Kevin Yeager and Andrew Kevin Walker, mm. based on obviously the original story by Washington Irving. Mm. Um, so, moving right along, um, I've got lots of paperwork here. This one mm. now, budget okay. drum roll uh. 70 mil, <whistles> box office 207. Now, and that doesn't include obviously the home media money they made on it, so. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. Um, so not too bad at all. Sweet. Um, uh, well, now, a cast. Now, had a cast of thousands in here, you know. Yeah, and most of them are <laughs> well-known faces. Well, I know. That's the whole point. So I'll go through the first, the top half, and then mm. I'll, I'll just drop off them. Because, I mean, I can't... They had everyone written, uh, written down, the car park attendant and the and the laundry lady. Oh, whatever. No. Uh, Don't anyway. go there. Okay. Johnny Depp plays Ichabod Crane. Um, if you know the story, I'm not going to tell you who Ichabod Crane is. Uh, okay. Although his character is quite different because uh, he, he, he in the original, he was a schoolmaster. Yeah, in the Disney version. That's in, up here. Well, I'm not saying the, the Disney Ed one. Washington Irving's book. In Washington Irving's book, he was a schoolmaster who was a bit of a dipped... Or a, um, wit, a, wit, wit. a twit. Well, actually, the TV series, they make him a, uh, a policeman. Mm. So it, they made him a yeah. bit of a, mm. a deputy mm. policeman in this one to yep. give anyway, him more. Can I actually go through the cast? To give him more an active role in this one. You can waffle on as much as you like after I go through the cast again. Okay. Okay. Christina Ricci plays uh, Katrina Van Tassel, uh, the love interest, um, mm. obviously. I'll mm-hmm. tell you what, she looks really good as a blonde. Very pretty. Um, Miranda Richardson plays Lady Mary Van Tassel. She is a naughty person. An don't antagonist. go there yet. We don't know. We don't. They don't know. I'm not yet. saying it. Michael Gambon, Baltus Van Tassel, uh, husband of Miranda, father of Christina, Casper uh, Van Dien. Well, you he, know him, guys. He plays Brom Van Brunt. He was like. Um, Former love interest of um, yeah. <laughs> um, Katrina. Katrina. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, never mind. Uh, oh, well. Jeffrey Jones plays a Reverend Steenwick. Um, Christopher Lee plays a Burger Master. Uh, Must eat a lot of burgers. <laughs> yeah. Right. Richard Griffith plays a magistrate. Ian McDermott plays Dr. Thomas Lancaster. Michael Goth plays the notary. James uh, Hardenbrook. Um, I think I'll leave that because there's quite a few other people here, and and they'll be longer than the review. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, you could mention the uh, headless horseman guy, obviously, who uh, plays him. Okay. Obviously. Who was he? Um, Christopher, Christopher Walken. Walken. And actually, he plays a good role. I, I mean, there's some guys who who take to weird roles, uh, and are quite suited. And I think he really works in this role. He really suits the headless horseman in his demeanour, personality and everything else. So Christopher Walken, um, my hat off to you, sir. You did a really good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happy now. Oh, yes. (laughs) He didn't have a speaking part. Yeah, but he had that presence about him. That's what really appeals to this sort of thing. While actors may think it's annoying that we don't have any much speaking time in this production. And a few things like that. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, he had presence in him, among, you know, in the He did. The scared the crap out of me, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. I mean, 
I gotta admit, I'm I'm, first time I'm impressed with Tim Burton in this movie because I never would have pegged this as a Tim Burton movie for for what mm. for an instant. But then, oh, well, initially, now you gotta look at it. He he likes the slightly weird stuff, and this yeah. comes in over the slightly weird. It does. He looked Batman. He did the Batman movie. I remember. Uh, what else did he do? Come on, run up, Willy Wonka yeah. one. Willy Wonka. Yeah, uh, let me on. see. Um, he did. Um, he did Ed Wood, obviously, and let me see. Um, the Big Eyes, even though that's more of a, um, a true eyes, story. I don't know. Um, no, I'm talking about weird movies. Um, well, there were a did lot. Did you do of, any animated ones? Yes, he did plenty of those. Yeah. Uh, Night, um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. Um, Corpse Bride. Corpse maybe. Bride. Um, I think there was an, another few that uh, were. I'm, 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 I'm making you have a think about it. Yeah, but there's a there's few a out there. Them. He likes uh, weird, and this comes. This comes into weird. Mm. Yes, shall I go into the story itself now? Yeah, might as well. The people have to get to bed soon, so uh, yeah, yeah, you'll talk so, on this so one. So the story quite begins with um, a, a man named Garrett. Yeah, yeah, that's, I got the name right, Garrett, who is writing his last will and testament for his lady love, whom he's married secretly, I should say, and the only and the only people who know about it are keeping it secret for him too. Anyway, he in a small town. That's pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. One day he's yeah. Uh, one night he's riding in his coach, and um, he then spots um, a scarecrow, and it's creepy, very, yeah. very Tim Burton. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, then he hears the headless horseman approaching. Gallop, gallop, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and we see the coachman. I think his might be I his think son. It was his son. I think I said. I think, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And he got his head lopped off. And both the, of them. Yeah. Mm. And Garrett tries to outrun the headless horseman, but he then gets trapped by him against the scarecrow, and he has his head lopped off. And then we cross Edge over roll. to New York. <laughs> Yeah, New York. And we see Ichabod, who's a constable, who's trying to get the people, the police, the police and the, and the prosecutor to see it, that, that you cannot use old me- medieval torture to get a confession. It, it should be uh, proper police investigations to find out the truth. Yeah, because... Mm. Yeah, hey, they, they just. Hey, yeah, he found a, forward thinking. Yeah, he found a dead body in the water, and he I assumed that there might have been a cause of death, you know, beforehand. Not cause of death; they just happened to fall into the water. Must have drowned. No, he found out that there was no water in his lungs, which means he was dead before he was. Well, he sa- assumes that there was a big chance of that, but they just assumed yeah, that yeah. Um, cutting up a body is not the answer to it. They think it's barbaric. It's the old-fashioned stuff. They think it's it fights against their beliefs and what they think is wrong it's or right. Sa- it's, it's uh, what's it, uh, not sacrilege. Um, it's... Whatever, you know. It's just respecting the dead. You know, we, uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, the um, guy, the... Um, um, the prosecutor, well, the uh, the court, the judge tells him. The magistrate. Magistrate, whatever, tells him. Christopher get, Lee, if you like. <laughs> tells um, Ichabod, guess what? I'm sending you to Sleepy Hollow to investigate the murders of. F- um, let me see, one, two, three, three, three people, people that time, yeah. in that town, and we want you to go down there. And, and you can use your newfangled ways of investigation and come back and tell me how they went. Yeah, yeah. or come back and try to get the. Per, the person who's responsible and will deal with him according to them. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, so he brings his weird little devices, probably all invented by like Tim Like a Mary Burton. Poppins bag, all stuff that comes out of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, he gets inside the coach, it, and then he soon arrives at Sleepy Hollow. It's really creepy, this place. Actually, did they build that? Yeah, they built it. They built the whole set, did they? Yeah, they wow. built the whole they set. It looked really good. It looked very creepy, according to the um, crew and the cast. They thought it was very eerie. Yeah, no, it looked great. Yeah, it looked, it looked like it'd been there for years. Yeah, oh, yeah it yes. looked really good. Dark and gloomy. I gotta admit, when oh, no, it was dark and stormy. Now, it's interesting. In the, even though this is not black and white, it feels like it does do doesn't do too much color in this movie when you think about it. Yeah, they used a, a more subdued lighting and coloring in it, and actually had. Would you say an old worldly sort of feel? To yeah, it has an old worldly look. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but felt, then it again, felt good, yeah. But then again, this was back in, um, let me see, what was it? It's, 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 it's supposed it's to be 17, 1799. 99. And they tried to get a nice 
feel to it by not yeah. over colorizing it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he soon arrives yeah. and he then heads to the Van Tessels estate, who yeah. are having a party, and he meets. Quite just have a party. And he meets um, <laughs> Katrina, the the daughter of the household of the house. She's a beauty, and She's she pretty. mistakes him for um someone and kisses him. Oh. Yeah, why not? Well, she had, playing like a blind man's bluff. She had a blindfold on. Yeah, she calls she had, pick a dee witch to pick a dee witch. witch yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah, I don't but know. It's an American thing. I like yeah. to think she's secretly a witch, a white witch. Well, no. It's like, it was a game that I'll play. I know, but I think later on we find out that we she's, find out she, later she on. practices yes. white magic. Yes, she does. Because mm. her mummy did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, so she's... Probably kept it secret from her her father, and uh, and vice versa with her mm-hmm. and everything. Anyway, eventually Brom tries to break, tries to get, gets jealous and gets on his high horse and tries to uh, engage Ichabod in a scuffle. But he finally then he introduces himself as a policeman yeah. and he backs off a little bit. Yeah, and then. Miss Lord Van Tessel arrives and tells him, um, you're more than welcome to come in, sir, if you're selling something. <laughs> Not knowing who he was at the time. Yeah, Ichabod explains who he is. He's um, a constable come okay. there to investigate the murders of what's been happening. So shortly after they yeah. have a meeting. So they sit in doors. the du- in their small dining uh, well, area, they in, whatever. They went into a room, okay? Yeah, <laughs> and where the Reverend and, what's his name? Let me uh, see. The magistrate. The magistrate, the... the Reverend. The lab- the and the librarian. The notary or whatever. Or yeah, people. the notary. Yeah. And they're all sitting there, and Mr. Van Tessel mm. gives um, Ichabod the short of the story of what's happened. They say it was done by a headless horseman who, back in the many, many years ago, was killing... Um, in the in the war, he was a hired mercenary yes. Hessian. He was out in that area, yes. And he didn't do it for money. He did it because he just loved killing people. Yeah. And, and then when he was finished his job, they had to get rid of him, so they lopped his head off. No, not exactly like that. <laughs> oh, whatever. So anyway, while he's out in the during, out in sleep. Be hollow. He gets his horse gets shot down, a and he tr- and he gets t- chased into the woods. He tries to hide, but two little girls he runs into. One of them snaps a stick, and the and he gets caught, and they lopped his head off with his own sword. That's what I just said. You didn't say whom you're referring to. I said the Hessian, the naughty guy, had his head cut off. Yes, he, he didn't say whom. Was it the enemy soldiers or was it his allies who wanted to kill him off? Hey, friendly fireworks just as good. Anyway, they bury him and his decapitated head into the ground and they place the sword there. As a marker? As a marker saying it's a cedar beetle and... Don't come here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's what they believe, and Ichabod's saying that there must be a logical explanation behind this. Yeah, yeah, it must be a human being doing it. Yeah, while this is happening, sort of another a man is uh, keep watch. His name is um, what's his name? Uh, his name, um, Masby. Jonathan Masbeth. Jonathan Masbeth, who is Masbeth. Ki- Ma- yeah, like Mas- having a bath. Masbeth. And he's um, <laughs> watching for the headless horseman, and then we see something unusual. The flames of some torches are lit, but they That's somehow get lit all in the All by themselves. Yeah. Mm. They blew out like in a weird, creepy way. Like some f- snuffed them out. Yeah. And then suddenly we hear a gunshot in the distance, and we see Mas. Masbeth. Jonathan, I'll say, yeah, John, yeah, is yeah. running through the woods and the headless horseman is chasing him and he soon lops his head off and then we cut to the next morning and John and Ichabod's getting a horse, gunpowder, I mentioned. Oh, a beautiful horse, an old draft horse, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah was that old... one of three feet, was it? Yeah. 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 Clydesdale and... or something, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we also meet um, um, a guy who runs the um, horse renting place or whatever they call it. Whatever, rent a horse. You know, yeah, right. what do they call him? Um, <laughs> I, I just remember. Um, Killing, a a Killian. That's it, Killian. A Sorry. Killian. Killian. Uh, yeah. Killian. Killian? Killian who? What's the name? Killian. I'll take you away for it. <laughs> anyway, he says he'll help him out as much as he can. Then we hear a gunshot in the distance indicating that one of the men discovered the remains of of Jonathan. So quickly, 
um, Ichabod and Killian quickly mount the horses and try to find the dead remains. Of course, the other, the elders arrive there and they move the body, which is something police procedures would not you allow you to but do. But they didn't know this. Yeah, even Ichabod says, you move the body. You must never move the body. And Why? He, because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very, very tongue in cheeky sort of. You know. Yeah, he examines the body. Says that there was a sing- very strong thrust of you know to the kill. But but the wound was cauterized at the same time as being inflicted too. Mm-hmm. Yes. A heart, no blood. It was all sealed. Aha. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, it was That's dis- different. Yes, it was. He then examines the area. He does it like in Sherlock Holmes fashion, where he explains how. The attacker runs Jonathan down and turns his horse and comes back to claim the head. Yeah. Then we cross over to the funeral, where he, Ichabod befriends the son to Jonathan, um, who does, doesn't have anyone else to... to well, he has no, father, no mother or father anymore, so he's technically an orphan, even though he's 15. <laughs> Practically, he is. Yeah, <laughs> and he offers Ichabod to be his, his manservant, his manservant or something. Yeah. if he um, obliges. But of course, John, Ichabod objects to her because he doesn't think he has a stomach to look after him. But then one of the um, men, the elders guys, tell him, guess what, we think that there, was m- there wasn't just... Four people that were killed by the horsemen, it was actually five. Five people in four graves. And this it confuses Ichabod. So he, the next morning, gets his, the men to open up the coffins and exhume try to find... The ex, bodies. Exhume the bodies. Yes. Yeah. So he, one of them was a lady. Um, this is the lady <coughs> um, witch ship, I think. What if her name is... Anyway, he, he then sees a single flush that's down her lower abdomen, or the low, lower stomach area. Yeah. And he then takes it to be um, examined. So he opens her up, and it's gross. And he then discovers that the widow, or Winship, was with child. She had a bun in the oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah as I said yeah. before, um, I'll, anyway... Back yeah, yeah, to yeah. the story, we then yeah. see Ichabod r- riding in, you know, across the br- special bridge we heard of in the stories so many times, and we hear cr- frog, the croaking frog saying, Ichabod, Ichabod. <laughs> This was in, um, I guess Tim Burton got the idea from the Disney version for this sort of thing, well, so he borrowed scene. it. He, yeah, he borrowed a scene, and one of those covered bridges where the headless horseman is one end. <coughs> and froze a pumpkin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The same thing in this movie. Yeah, but Henry, then we you stole it. But yeah. then we discover yeah. it's Brahm who's k- k- dressed tre- up. Yeah, yeah, dressed up. And I think a lot of people who often think that Brahm in the book may have frightened Bic, the real the Ichabod character well, in, in, out of in the his, Disney in the story. cartoon. He's supposed to disappear at that point in time. Yeah. Whoever threw the pumpkin. <laughs> anyway, Ichabod passes out, and we get a flashback to his past that says that his mother was a white witch who did magic, and and his, <coughs> his father was a very it. deeply religious man. Um, killed her. It, we exactly. don't see it, we don't see this all at once. It just um, it implies in short bits here and there in, in that what became of her. She sounded like a very nice lady. She loved her son, and he, she did some. I- interesting things to, to and all that stuff, and she even taught him about how uh, used a special piece of card board that has a picture of a cardinal on one side and a, a cardinal to bird and a and an <laughs> empty cage, and this sort of helps him see the world differently. No, no you, you put a card and two pieces of string, and you want figure back in the forwards, spin it, and look, you put the bird on one side of the card. And the cage on the other side of the card into the same image. That's yeah. what he's trying to say. Helps you sort of meditate when you're looking at it. Yeah, anyway, um, so back to the present. Um, Ichabod <coughs> eventually, um, let me see what happens. Oh, yeah, he decides to um, find out a bit more about um, what's been happening. And he does suspect the elders that there's more to this than than ever. He then. Tell us tells them tells one of them that there's no headless horseman. There never was a headless horseman. Even tries to get him to admit who might be the widow's likely husband or possible father, or, father to a baby. Obviously. Yes, exactly right. Because he thought uh, yeah, there, mu- 
must be ah, a, a motive. Ah, yeah, he, f- he probably still thinks the Headless Horseman might be just a prank by some stupid locals like Bram did. But he then disco- but then the, cre- the Headless Horseman arrives and he slices through the... Um, um, through the the guy's he- head and le- and leaves Ichabod fainting again. again. He faints more like and several then, times in this movie. He faints is good because we normally have a bit of a dream. Do you have yeah. a dream song? Yeah, he again. dreams again. We get a bit more of his past. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, mm. he then um, then decides to head into the woods and try to find out answers. <coughs> uh, hopefully, may be able to find a way to stop this he- headless horseman thing. Anyway, so he takes his manservant, who's the only volunteer, I might Lord. add, and Lord. heads into the woods. And they find, they find, like I said, you know, they meet up uh, Christina, Ricky, uh, I don't know, so, uh, whatever. No, they meet a witch uh, in oh, the yeah, woods, yeah. In, in, uh, living in a cave. First, yeah. And um, the witch, um, who's p- probably possessed <clears throat> by the devil or demon or whatever. Well, she summons a demon to her bidding. Yeah, see, yeah. and it tells Ichabod that you must follow the trail and in order to find the um, the 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 evil tree in order to find the um, grave the of grave the, of the, the headless Hessian. horseman. Yeah, the Hessian with no aggression. <laughs> yeah, just quickly Ichabod leaves the um, witch's hovel. It was really creepy, I might add. <laughs> yeah, really weird. <laughs> anyway. Actually, the funny thing is... What? She was one of the little girls in the beginning. Don't, don't, don't tell no, 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 sure. them. I'm just saying she was one of the little girls who actually uh, was there when the Headless Horseman was created by his death. Mm. There was another one. We won't mention it at the moment. We'll mention somebody else later on. Yeah. Anyway, back to the story. Um, so so he eventually, Ichabod eventually <coughs> runs across um, Katrina and he, he is happy to see her and all that stuff. And... They, darkly enough, um, his the Jonathan's um, son was able to find the the, the evil tree and yeah, he's got a really good shape. Looks yeah, like a body almost bending, bending over or something on side. Yeah. yeah, really good. It is creepy. creepy. And <coughs> as um, Ichabod approaches, he feels a, he as he touches the tree. It, tree. There's a bit of blood. On the tree. He then yeah. takes an axe and starts cutting the tree. And I think that there's blood inside the roots. Or yeah, in, yeah, or so the roots it's, are it's, the it's blood. There's some air roots in on the side of the tree or something. Yeah. And he cuts through it and he finds a collection of heads. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, he, and Ichabod said, thinks or says, this, is, this tree is a gateway, a gateway to, gateway to another world. Ah. What an astute observation. Oh, yes. <laughs> he then notices... When he gets to the top of the tri- of the hill, it's where the tree is. Um, he, 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 well, he discovers it, that yeah. the ground <coughs> has been stirred, meaning it has previously been dug up and by somebody. By someone. So he gets a shovel and starts prying at the at the the earth. And he finds in the hole the skeleton, but no head. The skeleton of the headless horseman. Yes. And no head. Mm. Meaning, we found out the reason. That the reason the headless horseman is rising from night after night is because um, he's, he's looking for his head, he's looking for his head, and, and taking other people's heads <laughs> when he's in the meantime. In the meantime, hmm. just then, um, the ho- somehow the earth starts shaking, and then suddenly uh, the horseman starts rising from the tree. Yeah, he comes out of the tree where the heads were. Yeah, yeah. sort of like an entrance. Yeah, very as we said. nice. <laughs> anyway, he quickly Ichabod jumps onto his horse gunpowder and quickly sh- follows after the headless horseman in order I'll be going st- the other way myself mm-hmm. yeah. anyway me- yeah, yeah. so meanwhile it soon arrives at the um the <coughs> the the horse rental places um home yeah, you old rent a horse yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. his wife who's a midwife i think she is yes midwife yeah who helps assist women getting pregnant whatever mm. or uh, you getting giving birth whatever yep whatever anyway um Soon enough, the headless horseman arrives and starts attacking, slaughtering the um the the family to part. I mean, not not part. I mean, they had it's just taking its heads. He uh, kills the hubby, kills the wife, and kills the child off screen. Yeah, we didn't see it. It was ra- rather good. Thanks, Timmy. Didn't want to see that. Thank you, yeah, Timothy. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, Tim Burton. We really appreciate <laughs> it very much. <laughs> anyway, soon enough, Brahma arrives and he tries to fight the. 
the Headless Horseman, but somehow the Headless Horseman doesn't feel like he wants to fight him. He tries to stab him a couple times, but... Um, th- he's already dead. He's so. already dead. Mm. And Ichabod tries to interfere, saying that you, he we cannot defeat him alone, and he goes on to say that he's not after you, but Bram wouldn't listen. He continues um, fighting the creature, and then they realize that they're, they cannot, they're outmatched, so they quickly run underneath that special bridgey thing. Yeah. But then we notice that he, the Headless Horseman is not running after them. He's on top of it, walking yeah. along on the roof. He's walking, he's got spurs making him jingle. Jingle, jangle. And then he soon appears on the other side. He stabs <clears throat> Ichabod in the chest. Or well, shoulder. Shoulder, yeah, or, 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 or yeah, near his shoulder. Yeah, near his yeah, shoulder, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, he kills Bram by slicing his waist in half. Yeah, and and I know what you're thinking: Why haven't they he cut his head off in that very scene? Because well, they, they you'll soon find yeah, out yeah. in shortly in a short time. He, yeah, he's, he's only asked particular heads. Yeah, he didn't want his head. He just wanted to kill him because it's being a nuisance. Yeah, so back yeah, to her. Yeah. So Ichabod faints. A third time. Again. And this time he arrives back at the um, Ben Tassel's house and um, he's being treated by, with his, you know, his, by his By wins. the lady of the house? Yeah, K- Katrina. Mm-hmm. And he then tells Van um, Tassel and he, some of these guys that he discovers that the whoever stole the Headless Horseman's head, the Hessian's head, is controlling him, meaning yeah. that the dead bodies that have been stacking up are done by the person who's controlling, controlling the, dead the, guy. Um, the headless horseman. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Well, why not? Yeah. Anyway, so he passed out a second time after drinking a sleeping draft. A potion, yeah. yeah. And this potion. is where he, we get the big reveal that his mother was killed by his father. And, of course, yeah. it, that was in his... Put you, it, it was at the time we found it, she's put a nine maiden or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and we see him when he's entering a red room of sorts, and then when he re-emerges, he looks like the headless horseman when he re-emerges. Well, in his dream, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a, a child's dream, after all. Yeah. And then we see that he get, got these marks from one of the torch devices. Yeah, he got, he had these he, little scars on his hands, like a pattern. Yeah. He actually put his hands on, um, like a bit of nails type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like Ew. that. It's disgusting, honestly. Anyway, um, it was really disgusting the bit where she her her body comes out of the um the Iron Maiden and all this blood and stuff. But I, I think that this is imagination. So yeah. yeah. Then he wakes up in Katrina's arms. She, I think she was just leaning over to check if he was okay. Yeah, and he his temperature t- and stuff. He and- tech. He tells her what about how his mother was a child of nature, a good, a, go, a white witch, I think, mm-hmm. and how his f- she was murdered by his own father, and that by this happening, he he lost his faith in everyone about with God and everything else, meaning he stopped believing that it's and he's only he only believes in facts and figures, meaning he only believes in the truth, but. When it comes to supernatural, it's hard to believe when yep. you think about it. Yeah. Anyway, he he then asks, tells sorry to Christine about um, Katrina about her dead boyfriend, and Katrina is she said she she said she shed her tears for Bram, but she's no longer her heart's not broken. Meaning she because he wasn't in love with him anymore because he had found another. Yeah, she kisses him and they hug. And then the next morning, he's um, tended to by the lady of the house because the servant girl um, named Sarah... What a good name. Hey, Sarah. Uh, what? Quits enough. Um, has run away. Well, that's or a, so we think. She, was, she said the maid had run away. Anyway, yes. then... Um, uh, then... Um, Ichabod continues his research. He thinks that, that there's something to do with the Van Tessels, meaning who's, um, or the people who will inherit after Ger- Van Garrett's death. Now that his widow, the widow's gone, and his son's gone, and there must be some kind of connection between the Van Tessels and uh, the, um, te- Von, the Von Tessels and the Garretts. And he suspects that that they might be the next in line. So he ends up going to the to the um, person, the bookkeeper, who has records of all the um, the notary, not the, the bookkeeper. Okay, the notary who has um, he's a bit like a lawyer. Okay, who has all these um, 
and he they discover um John Jonathan's son I mean Jonathan's um um writing special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And inside it is the last will of of the mm-hmm. um gran- the um of Garrett. the Grand Get Grand Garrett. Yeah. Um, that says that whatever he's left, the will, um, whatever he's got, he has left, will go to the his um, the widow Winship. I think her name's. That's the lady I mentioned that got her head chopped off, In and we beginning. discover mm. that she was pregnant earlier. And then we discover something else. There was a there was a marriage certificate indicating that the widow would marry to the. Mr. Garrett and all mm, that stuff, yeah. and now that both Garrett's, he, he, him and his son are dead. See, before this happened, the, the, him and his son were arguing, and they think and that his um, I think it had something to do with the will because and all that Quite stuff. Quite possibly. To cut a long story short, Garrett was put out of the way, yes. and his son's put out of the way. Yeah, and the widow's the, way, the widow put out of the way, mm-hmm. and his estate was going to revert to Balthus Van Tassel's family. Yeah, it's Balthus as a, yeah. was he a brother or a cousin? No, or something, see, or just, um, the Garretts were f- were friendly towards friendly to um, yeah, the yeah. Van Tessels, and they were offered um, a nice farmhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And after Van Tessels rose mm-hmm. in social circles, and yeah. they prosper, yeah. and they got rich, yeah. and they got a bigger but, house. And, out he, of and the his wife was never enough to go back to him because he gave him a chance to make good. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, but the problem is what n- now someone's trying to undo the good work. Yes. Anyway, okay. soon enough, um, with the new evidence they have, they then head back to um, Ichabod's house, where he notices Katrina in his room, and uh, he inquires about this, even though she's well, she's technically she's acting suspicious. A little yes. Bit. But anyway, he eventually gathers his evidence and puts it in a drawer, and she notices this. And then while she's heading out of the room, he freaks out over a spider and his um, servant moves the bed, the, to, the bed the to kill the spider. And we see in pink chalk... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, a pentagram. A pentagram with an eye in the middle. Yeah, and he thinks it's an evil yeah. talisman. Well, his servant not. did. He yeah. says that someone's casting That's, evil spells yeah, against but you. But it wasn't. We find it later. It's a good one. Anyway, we then find, later that night we see Mrs. Van Tessel, um, Lady Van Tessel, I should say, uh, is doing something suspicious. So Ichabod follows her into the woods and sees her making out with a reverend. Lucky reverend. Hmm. And she, we see her taking a knife, a very fancy one, and, and cut cutting hand, into her hand. Making a scar on it. Okay. Yeah. And this is very suspicious. He, then Ichabod heads back to his rooms and discovers the evidence, the marriage certificate, the other stuff, that he got has, from the been, yeah. has been um, taken from the drawer. And he then discovers that um, Katrina, who takes it to her old family home, the farmhouse I mentioned, which was burnt down, I think. A long time ago. A long time ago. And she's burning the evidence. She thinks her father cannot be the one responsible. Yeah, so she's protecting her father. Yeah, even lovely. though, Kat- even though he thinks, um, Ichabod thinks that his fa- that her father is clearly guilty of something. Of something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. she tells him goodbye, Ichabod Crane. I curse the day you you came to sleep. Came to her. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, he heads back home and he confronts um, Lady Van Tessel about her wound and hand. Well, oh no, no, she, no she, she raised that you haven't said anything. About the wound on my hand. Oh yeah. In case you actually avoided talking about it, yeah. Because she knew he saw her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it was, she was up to was clearly um, having a good time. No. no anyway, yeah, yeah. then Lord Van Tessel arrives and he tells them about how the, at the church they're going to what are they going to do? I think it was oh, uh, they were going to um, have, a meeting, oh, have uh, a meeting regarding Ichabod and his behaviour and, and how it get was rid of him, maybe and how. Van Tessel encourages him, or well, requests Ichabod to leave right away because this is not going to be. This is going to be a witch hunt, and it's not going to be about the headless horse. Uh, he'll be the witch mm-hmm. uh-huh. because of his um unruly um his strange, white, his strange ways. Strange ways. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, he then 
Lord Van Tessel notices the wound on his wife's hand. Mm-hmm. She just says, oh, it's just I just cut myself with a kitchen knife, even though that looks nothing like a kitchen knife wound. And she suggests she binds it with some flowers, you know, in the woods. Yeah. So when we get closer to church time, she's in the woods, and, and Van Tessel is telling her quickly now, we have to go to church now. And then we see the headless horseman slowly approaching from behind her. And then quickly we hear um, uh, everyone yelling that the headless horseman was coming. And Van Tessel arrives and tells Katrina that that her mother was killed by the headless horseman. But anyway, they then he- everyone heads awesome. inside and tries to bar- barricade the off and hopefully get, try to survive the um, ho- the horrible horseman trying to kill to try to kill but them. But he couldn't go onto hallowed ground. He couldn't go past the boundaries of the fence which surrounded well, the church. Well, so we think. No, he couldn't. He couldn't go on there. He found out. He's very resourceful. Now. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Katrina is quickly doing something on the gr- on the on the floor of the church while this is happening. The Reverend and the what's his name? Uh, I'm bad with names. I think it's um, it was yeah, Doctor Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think the so, doctor, yeah, yeah. the um, Maybe, yeah. part. Uh, they, um, the Reverend is actually accusing Van Tessel of being the one who's the the horseman wants, and then um, Thomas, the doctor, tells um, both Van Tessel and the Reverend that they've both been in, both. Him, the doctor and him have been manipulated, meaning they've been blackmailed. And but before he could go into details, he gets knocked out by the Reverend, and Von Tessel shoots the Reverend. Yeah, nice. And he quickly yells at everyone to keep back, and he heads up to the steps there near a window. Near a window, and mm. he yells, "It's a conspiracy theory. I'll, I'll seek it out. All that stuff." Yeah, blah 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 blah. And blah. suddenly we see um a. <clears throat> Um, a, a fence fe- rail, a uh, fence post, a broken part. breaking, broken off. That's pelled into his chest, into the back. Straight through, come out the chest, Gross. and with a rope att- attached to it, and the headless horseman drags him out very quickly. <laughs> yeah, and he then pulls him across the, um, the, the ground to and where the fence but, is. Yeah, got stuck. So and his he head's ends- on the outside, so he cuts his head off. Yeah, well, that's very <laughs> unfortunate. Then Katrina lies, uh, faints. Which is weird, because <laughs> every turn, time we, turn. yeah, 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 mm-hmm. and he's Ichabod notices the chalk, pink, pink chalk, I should say, yeah. and we then see the pentagram on the floor of the, of church. the church. That's he was drawing it, meaning. Mm. Mm. But he later, look, he, he finds out soon thereafter that it wasn't an evil thing. It was a thing. To, it was a charm to protect the ones he loves. Yes, yeah, so anyway, uh, uh. so at this point, Ichabod thinks she's the one who's been manipulating yeah. events, meaning mm. she was the one, probably the um, likely person who <coughs> has control you of You think you'd the... actually ask questions, wouldn't you? But unfortunately, Ichabod feels like he's, he's fought a losing battle, so he thinks it's time for him to go. So he says his goodbyes to Katrina when she's having a nap, and he says his goodbyes to his manservant, and then he makes his way onto the coach. And mm. as he's driving away, he sees um, the Van, Mrs. Van, Lord Lady Van Tessel's body, the headless body, I should say, being placed inside the funeral home, I think it's the funeral. Yes. Yeah. And, and we notice got... something about the cut on the hand. It's the cut on the hand. Anyway, oh, before a... we get to that, he then opens the book. He, uh, he sees... Katrina gave him a book about special spells and ca- casting, and he then opens the book up and sees the, the very thing that we were discussing about sorry. how the symbol Katrina was, was writing for, for on both under his bed and, and at the, the ch- church. The, it was a symbol for protection. protection against evil spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Anyway, he then get or encouraged the coachman to head back towards the town. So he heads to the funeral home. And he then opens up the coffin where Lady Van Tessel's body is in it and finds that there's no blood flow, no plotty, no healing, which means the dead mm-hmm. body, the cut was made after the dead body was dead. Yeah. 
So that body see. could not be Lady Van Bugalug. See, no. this sort of thing is exactly the things you'd see in the coroner's yeah, or in, in the Sherlock Holmes movie. Anyway, mm-hmm. Katrina's alone in the house and then she's approached by um, a figure and we see it's Lady Van Tessel and she's wearing this awesome creepy gown. That's good. And <laughs> Katrina sees her and faints. And this is the second time she's fainted. Yeah, third, third time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. we... Wow. S- then um, Jonathan, um, Max, Ma, Ma, Mac, Bath, whatever his name is, Max. Yeah, that guy. Um, the um, young servant to um, Kabad quickly follows um, Katrina and um, Van Tessels, Mrs. Van Tessels, to um, an abandoned. Um, Looks like a so, uh, not so, um, windmill, windmill. Yeah, crusher, wheat yeah. crusher, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we see Katri- um, Mrs. Ben Tessel taking a string of her hair, of, of Katrina's hair, and starts conjuring up the headless horseman. Yeah, I need you. Yeah. He, so he needs to put Katrina out, Katrina, Katrina out of the way because with She's her father gone and Katrina gone, She'll inherit everything. Yeah. <laughs> How would you explain that? That was her, her plan all the time, wasn't it? Yeah. See, um, years ago, um, she lived with her mother, brother, her sister, and her dad in a cottage not far from them. This is the same cottage that the Ventessels lived in uh, before they moved into yeah, the big house. Yeah, yeah, and, and they were thrown out of that, were they? Yeah, well, her father died, yeah. and the landlord, which was Van Garrett, um, evicted them. Because and the town suspected th- th- her mother of a being a witch. And she had two little girls. Yeah, but this didn't mm. stop her from teaching her girl the dark arts. And one of them was yeah. the witch that Ichabod spoke to some time ago, trying to get some ideas on where to find the headless horseman. Yeah, me. Ah. so anyway, back to the story. So after her mother died, which was a year later... Um, both her, her and her sister have been living in the woods, and then they met the they gone they sort of came across the Hessian the um, he- Hessian when he's trying to escape. Yeah, mm. and she was the one Who to the twig. snap the twig the- and cause the Hessian to get his head lopped off. And this is where she pledges her loyalty and her life to Satan. He's a nasty little piece. Yeah. And she says that she hopes that with Satan's power, she can get raise the horseman and hopefully get him to avenge the people responsible for her destitution. Exactly. Is that the right word? Yeah, it's a very, very good. I heard that word in um, Jane Eyre one time. Oh, very good. Anyway, back to the story. She'll skimp. So she skimped. And <laughs> so she wants to take her revenge on Mr. Ben Garrett and Yay. the Ben Tessels for <clears throat> stealing her family home. So anyway. Anyway, she so she makes her plans by... At, when, at first, she enters her man, the Ben Tessels house as a sickness. And I guess she poisoned... Katrina's um, mum for those years and soon enough um, when her mum died she took over as being um, Mr. Van Tessel's wife. Yeah, he became stepmom. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's move on now. Then she started um, started her things by she started killing the um, the Van Garretts but then she had to kill witnesses who so much as knew about the um, the whole thing, like yeah. um, somehow those the midwife I told you about, she knew about the widow's possible upcoming baby yeah, because she was she told her a big secret and this was right in front of her husband. So she had to send the Hessian again out to kill them. And the to Reverend avoid knew about the secret marriage and different things. Yeah, and, yeah. so she yeah. uses her manipulation. She even blackmailed the doctor who was having an affair with the servant girl Sarah, meaning. Um, if any of this, these facts are revealed, then they're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, so you get rid of all the witnesses, then, if it, well, if there's yeah. no witnesses, there's no crime. No. One thing that bothers me, like a pain in the neck mostly, is how is she going to convince the people, whoever is whoever's doing the will, the, like the, um, the test, you know, the, the will the thing, will, yeah. um, who's going to... But who's gonna not believe that she's actually she her she's characters de- her character's dead to the whole public to the, to, the t- to the town? How what are they gonna what who what are they gonna ex- I, what's gonna how is she gonna explain her appearance again? Unless 
now this is an interesting twist. Unless she, her, she claims that she's her sister, which will explain a lot, considering her sister is in the woods and she kills her sister. Yeah, she what does that tell you, guys? She may, that way, she, she'll, she can come back and say, I'm my so-and-so sister and I'll inherit the everything. Exactly. That's my only explanation behind yeah, that. It possibly, yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, maybe we don't know. That part doesn't come out in the it story. It doesn't get mentioned, yeah. but I have However, a suspicion because if if Ben Tess, Mrs. Ben Tessel <laughs> reappears and tells him, "I just happened to have gotten a cut in the woods. I didn't get really my head off, chopped off, even though there's a dead body." Yeah. So, um, but there's Living got to right be an explanation along. for her reappearance in if, she, right if a plan goes works. Anyway. Well, maybe it's more about vengeance than the money. I don't know. It Let's seems that she was <laughs> bent on getting the money because she says that she that she plans on getting everything after Kit Kit well, death. Go. Good. Anyway, right. back to the who, story. Who's going to challenge her? Good point. Uh-huh. Anyway, meanwhile, so um, the young man server tries mm-hmm. to ch- swings at you know he hears her behind her and tries to use a I guess either a mallet and tries to yeah. hit hit her, but unfortunately he the misses. lady. Notice her, him there. Who knows? Maybe she cut sort of shadow. Anyway, eventually the ki- they quickly try to dart out of there, but then the horseman appears, and luckily Ichabod appears too, and they quickly tries to get back inside the windmill and try to avoid him. And like yeah, clockwork, I Frankenstein up appear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they quickly <laughs> um, try to get up to the top there, try to and try to burn the headless horseman. But as they get out of there in time, um, Ichabod says. That's the problem. He's dead to begin with. <laughs> yeah, it's a bugger. <laughs> then they quickly, How did he kill dead guy? Yeah, anyway, they yeah. quickly get onto the carriage, which the same carriage he used earlier. He took it, and the coach, while the com- the, the coachman was it. having a dump. Well, he did, it was a piss. Uh, oh, sorry, dump he's having a leak. I think he's yep. having a leak in the corner. Dump, and piss, he, whatever. He's having a leak. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so anyway, yeah. um, quickly they try to uh, try to get to do a chase scene in the scene and a couple of times um, Ichabod even gets he falls from the um, coach a couple of times <laughs> and, fall, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. and soon a, a, good, a good chase scene there you go. yeah. and soon enough they arrive at the tree and Mrs. Van Tessel arrives there too saying you're still alive in a nasty so nasty attitude Not along. Yeah. Yeah. and she takes raises a gun and she attempts to shoot Ichabod in the chest but fortunately the book I mentioned that Katrina gave Ichabod has kind of no, um, it was sitting in his coat pocket. The book. It was just over his heart, and she aimed for where his heart was. So the pellet, ball, ball. muscle, whatever it was, actually went into the book and not into his skin. Yeah, uh-huh. and quickly, um, um, Van Tessel grabs Katrina's head and tries to her tries to push her towards the horseman, saying, "Here, take her. She's all yours. All that stuff." And then, however. However, Ichabod tosses her from the horse and he quickly tr- tries to grab for the skull. But unfortunately... Yeah, she, oh, mentioned that she had the Hessian skull in a bag. Yeah. So it was uh, fixed to a strap around her waist. Yes. And as long as she had it, she had control over the Hessian. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah. the horseman approaches Katrina and as he's about to raise his sword, Ichabod was able to grab the, bag. the skull and yells, Horseman! And he quickly hurls the skull into the direction of the... Of the uh, horseman. horseman, and the horseman cra- cra- catches it with his and, and puts it on his head, head and, and yeah. suddenly skin and and yeah. veins and ugh, yeah, whatever stuff grow start all over growing all over his face. It's enough to gross you out. Anyway, and soon enough, his <coughs> his full yeah. head is in view. Yeah, he looks and it's Christopher Walken after all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he then approaches his horse, and as he's about to leave, he then sees Van Tessel's body <laughs> on the ground. And he takes her and he plants a kiss or, I Well, don't he know. kisses her, but he actually bites her mouth. He, uh, he yeah. had these really sharp teeth yeah. that he fall down. They're sharp down to um, certain points, like they look like canine teeth. Yeah, the, well, worse than that. Worse than and, that. And he, made, he did it years ago to make it look more vicious. Yeah. Quickly, he then leaps, his horse leaps into the tree and we hear Van Tessel's, Mrs. Van Tessel's, Screams as she's and you just see her hand protruding hanging, out the ha- protruding out of the, the tree. tree. The I think it's the one with the cut on the hand. Yes, I think possibly I can't remember. And, I think it was, yeah. and mm. just like clockwork, I Ichabod faints again. Bonk again. 
Then we cross yeah. over to the to the future where we see Ichabod in the coach sleeping off the um, excitement and Trina's next to him and they soon arrive in New York and he says just in time for a new, for the new century meaning it could be a year later I think well, no, considering this was done in this scene was in 19, 1799 so it might be 1800 well, it could now have been getting ready to turn over to the 1800s yeah and yeah. she's wearing a nice striped dress which is um, Tim Remember Burton's the, signature colours well Beetlejuice had a a striped clothes on. I just mean that mm. this is Tim Burton's signature colours. Black he and always white. goes black, and white, black and white stripes. Yeah, this is his signature colour. Makes you look taller. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's unusual mm. is what I'm saying. Anyway. anyway, he says, so Ichabod and Long Katrina uh, Van Tessel, who's now probably named Ichabod something or other, who yeah, now they're married, and along with his servant who's now going to live with them, and he's Ichabod heads towards his home and everything. The end. Fade to, to black. black yeah. Anyway, I think this is a good adaption of the story. This is probably one of my favourite adaptions. Well. I mean, I know it's not, not like the book. I've read the book, guys. I, I It's actually, still pretty damn good. It's pretty dark and, and mysterious and all that stuff. And... It's probably still the most scariest of stories. And I still think it's interesting that Tim Burton was able to put together a, a horrific um, sci-fi, I mean, science fiction type movie. Yeah. I mean, supernatural movie, sorry. I don't know why I said Here we go. I just want a bit, won't get into too much. I mean, we're just getting over, get running a bit long now. Sorry, guys. No, the filming was actually done uh, on the Hudson River, mm-hmm. a place called Tarrytown. Okay. Uh, it was a historic Hudson Valley area, uh, and what they actually did, uh, a place called Phillipsburg mm. Banner House, mm. and the forest around uh, Rockefeller State Lark Preserve. Mm. They actually built up the town uh, for, for um, mm. the shoot, uh, so it was all built. It wasn't actually mm. pre-existing buildings. Yeah. They cost about, I think, $1.3 million to make them. That's cool. So they must have had just the shelves on most, some of the buildings mm. and whatever, and a couple of yeah. interiors or sound stages and whatever. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it worked out really, really good. It really uh, yeah. c- captured the period. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. something interesting here that Johnny Depp describes Ichabod. He says um, Ichabod is being is so uptight he couldn't fit a pin up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get these meaning, but he's supposed to be. This is supposed to be seventeen hundreds, guys. They're yeah, supposed well. to be prim and proper type attitudes back then. Yeah, I mean, whatever. when you think about it, that's probably the behaviour or of the people of the people in the past. Maybe I'm not sure. Mm. I never know. I actually never met a person from ni- ni- the seventeen hundreds. So well, I you can't could get back so. in time and check him out. Hey, <laughs> um, I won't get into it. All I can say is, really, um, in most cases, the um, the reception, mm. most of the guys said it was great. That's a relief. Um, no change. One person, oh, it's only a fan base, Phil. It was, it's just made mm. the pl- made to appeal to the fans. Who else? Mm. What a stupid throwaway line I've seen it so many times. Oh, we, they may have to please the fans. It does seem They're s- the ones who actually pay to go see the film at the theatre. That However, doesn't make any bit... It's, sense. A, it's ridiculous. It doesn't even sound right. <laughs> it sounds like well, something like the um, things that. It just means I don't like it, just made it satisfy these geek, geeks. The guys who, go the, who paid their hard earned yeah. money to go see it. You know. yeah. yeah. I mean, if this was an over. Yeah. If this movie was was done to death, then there'd be a problem. But um, this I have no problem with yeah. this movie. No, I think it's quite good, actually. Now, um, there was a bit there. Um, initially, uh, contemplated shooting the film in black and white. Oh, so... <laughs> and in an old square uh, academy ratio. When that mm. proved unfeasible, they opted for own, almost mono colour. So that's what he said. Oh. They, they, bl- they, they turned the colour back a little bit so it was not in your face. So it was almost monochrome, but not yeah. quite there. I see what you mean. I, yeah. I mean, as yeah. I said before, guys, yeah. Um, yeah. It, while this is not a black and white movie, it, does, it comes off as... A bit of a, a dark has a dark and white look tinge yeah. to it, yeah, yeah. if not using mm. 
um, black and white. It's like using different darks well, shades you, you, of colours. You, 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 you subdue all it down. Like, you know, like when you, at twilight time, the, the sun goes away and things like, the colours aren't quite so vibrant. Well, they've got that sort of feel. Yeah, mm, yeah, exactly yeah, so. Yeah. Um, visual effects won't go into and stuff because otherwise I'll, I'll take forever. Um, musical score, Danny Elfman did a really good job. Oh, yeah. He um, does awesome he got, he got work, that. guys. I think that... <laughs> I think that's yeah. the reason why Tim Burton and him work so well together is because they were good friends. They're on the same page, probably. And yeah, I think, they know they want. And I yeah. think that mm. um, Johnny Depp and all the other guys, the reason they work so hard with um, Tim Burton is because they they got they get along so well. Wouldn't you say, Mike? Probably. Well, yeah. like I said, they're on the same page. They can go there and say, "Oh, well, this yeah, I can see that. I'll give it to you." And that's it, and that's what you want when you've got a team happening. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's, that's yeah. true. Because mm. Michael Keaton, uh, the guy who did Batman years ago, um, he gets a lot. I read somewhere he got, got along with Tim Burton and his thoughts on how things were. And I guess yeah. um, all the contract actors who worked with Tim Burton may have um, had the same, you know, likes and yeah, yeah. working with him. I mean, like some, there are some, some things that I like about him too. Myself, yep. I like how he's an unusual mind when it comes to it. Very I like this part here, um, where um, this um, part here, where the um, setup, the the feeling where it came to the set itself for this movie. They says the feeling what the feeling one ha- had walking around the Sleepy Hollow set, and in particular the town at Lin- Lime Tree, was almost as if it was walking around the inside of Tim Burton's head. Probably. Well, it's an interesting thing. I mean, considering how um, um, all these interesting ideas come off as dark and yeah, twisted. Yeah, well, that's dull to me. Yeah, and it's not like like we all... like like how other people write their old period type movies, you know, stuff like that. They try to make, keep it real, but for the camera, but Tim Burton takes a step differently to uh, other people. Isn't yeah. that right? Yeah. He, he's, he's a very smart man, a very um, mm. imaginative. I agree. Now, I've got a whole list of different things, accolades and nominations and different things, and I'm not going to go through them. There's dozens of them. Hmm. Let's say that they're nominated for dozens of awards and whatever, hmm. but the awards, they didn't win them all, but I think they won, won about <sighs> a third of the awards they'll nominate for out of several dozen. So, and that, and that include best film and best actors and different things and, oh, well. and best musical scores. And, so this is a really top movie. Yeah, I gotta admit, yeah, I yeah. do like Danny mm. Elfman's I mean, work. I mean, did you guys know that the, Tim Burton's doing a... Um, uh, Wednesday Adams TV series this year. He's going to be releasing it, and none other than Danny Elfman is going to be doing the soundtrack yeah, for it. Well, so it's kind of good that they're working together again, even though this is going to be working on a, a TV series. Even anyway, speaking of TV series, yes, because I was going to say I was going to say availability in a minute. Okay. Yes, you can get this on eBay. Mm-hmm. Plenty available, and mm-hmm. on Amazon you can get it. Okay, okay, rent or buy, but there is also a TV series of the same name. Um, Do not buy it accidentally. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but it's not what you want. Obviously, it's yeah. something like a. I think it's a yeah. modern mystery. I think. And no, it's set in the past and the present. Oh. Uh, it starts off in the past, and Ichabod Crane's actually a detective. And he's battling the naughty guy, mm. and then he passes out and he wakes up in the present. Mm. Well, our present, not his, his future. Uh, mm. And then the, I, I haven't seen it, but it might have some flashbacks. Yeah, I heard about it myself. Yeah. I'm not. T- too no, well, I don't know. I'm just saying, but that's what I'm saying. So it's, um, you don't buy that accidentally. It's not the, what you're looking for. You're just looking for a standalone movie, which is 1999. Mm. Yes, uh, it was Johnny Depp, obviously, yeah. and Christina Ricci. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, top movie. I'm. G- I don't do this normally. I'm going to give it a 10. I'm going to give this one a 10 myself, guys. Cause because I, I can't find any fault with it. Me neither. I don't think that I can fault this movie even if I if I was told to make this the fault. Yeah, I like the acting. I like the storyline. The costumes, the props, the music, the whole atmosphere, uh, the period they're trying to um, replicate. 
everything is there. I cannot find anything wrong with it. Mm. And I don't often give it 10. I always say, okay, maybe 9.5 or 9. But this, this, uh, this is up there. It's got to be probably one of the best movies of, uh, of this nature I've seen for an awful long time. I, I mean, agree. I'm going to say, well, it's done 20 odd years ago. But yeah, um, yeah, mm. you, you get a really good movie made by a really good director. Mm. and some good actors, it's got to come up trumps, yeah. Mm. And this is one of them, Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go. It's available, and obviously in other sites, you might get it lots of other places. Uh, And if you do look it up and try to find the one you're looking for, I always think that it's always good to put the lead actor's name in, or at least Tim Burton's name. If you you put in Sleepy Hollow, and then you look at, oh, with Johnny Depp, that's the one you're looking for. Mm. Okay. Mm. He's on the cover hmm. with Christina Ricci. Mm-hmm. Can't miss him. And she's, and Christina Ricci is a blonde. Okay. Yeah, some of you obviously say, well, we've seen this, but some of you haven't. And that's one of, one of the reasons why we're reviewing these movies, because some people have not seen every movie. Yeah. Young people, some who might be 20 years old now, may never have ever seen this movie unless it had been mum yeah. and dad's collection. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I saw the trailer for it, I mean... I wasn't, I, I didn't want to go ahead and watch it. But then Dad, Mike here, um, bought a copy and he went, He wanted to watch it just to see what it was, how it felt, how, how it, the yeah. um, footage looked. So I was watching it, yeah. And it seemed pretty good, the story. It wasn't completely a heart. Yeah, it's not a full-blown horror film. It's more like a supernatural murder mystery mm. action sort of thing but it's really good mm. it's great I like it yeah mm. enough blood to make it interesting yeah enough uh, violence from, um, from the villain yeah and there's not yeah. too much blood and gore yeah it's like I wouldn't say kiddies can watch it, but you know, yeah. uh, you know so it might it's be a bit to, squeamish. Yeah, can but, watch it, yeah, but it yeah. won't be, won't leave you um, wanting throw, to throw, throw, sink, throw up in the bathroom. Yeah, like yeah, like Hellraiser or something. Yeah, yeah, but I like Hellraiser too. But I'll tell you a story about that one day. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you now. I was watching Hellraiser one night. I, I think I came home from work. And I had my dinner. I said, I'm going to watch Hell Race now. Uh-oh. And I put it on and I threw up. <laughs> so, and I don't know whether I guts my food too quickly or Hell Razor made me throw up. I cannot remember. But I always remember throwing up watching Hell Razor. Mm. <laughs> so, That's an interesting image. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I missed part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. At least it was not diarrhea. Could you imagine that? Well, yes, that could have been... Uh, I could, I could have left a trail to the loo, yes. Anyway, anyway uh, um, that's about it for us tonight, yep, guys. I don't want to go through nah. um, Michael's bowels or this <laughs> discussion any longer. So be sure to check it out. Let us nah. know um, how, how you guys feel yeah. about the movie. For, for those of you who haven't seen it, hmm. it's a really, really good watch. It's not If you don't like, it's, I don't like horror movies, of course, I blah, blah. No, no, it's not a straight horror movie. It's not like a slasher movie, heads rolling and arms falling off and different things. No, this is a good action, supernatural, mm. uh, whatever. It's good. It's yeah. a good value. For those of you who might be a little bit uh, a little bit squeamish, you don't see a lot of blood in it. Yeah, and Tim no, Burton is yeah. not all about the blood. No, it's about the story. It's so mm. give it a go if you haven't seen it. Um, it's a bit squeamish. It's not a blood and guts horror movie. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's good though. If you like a good suspenseful drama from action thrown in, it goes in that category quite nicely. All right. Anyway, that's about it for us tonight. So in, um, I hope you guys enjoyed our latest podcast, everyone. Hey. This is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Oh, by the way, Tim Burton, if you're listening, thank you. Yes, thank you. Because <laughs> you have um, kind of um, brought to life so many awesome projects. Batman, animated stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nightmare, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and the Court's Bride. All, every, he, he, everything he puts his hand to, he yeah, seems to all, make pretty good. It's yeah. a bit mm. of a masterpiece. Yeah, I think he's really good. He's very... Uh, very uh, intelligent man, I think. Yeah, well, every, yeah. Mm. He put his stamp of his own style on it. Exactly. Bam, right yeah. there. Exactly. That's what. I, yeah. That's the words I was looking for. Anyway, thank you very much yes. uh, for a good product. Anyway, so as I was saying, I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode. And um, this is Sarah Simpson and Marvel saying we'll see you guys for our next one. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, guys.